The message of grace is brought to you by Christian people who believe the Bible to be the Word of God and who appreciate its power and authority. Within the pages of the Bible itself, there's a God-given design for its study. Rightly dividing the Word of Truth is the key to understanding the Bible. We're glad you've joined us for an interesting look into God's infallible book as Richard Jordan, President of Grace School of the Bible, presents another in a series of messages designed to help you understand and enjoy the Bible. Let's join him now. We're certainly glad you've joined us today. We trust that our time together in God's Word will be a rich blessing and a help to you as we look into the pages of the Scripture to allow the Spirit of God to teach us through His Word. You know, our program is designed to help you to understand and enjoy the Bible so that God's Word can go to work in your life. First uh, Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 says, The Word of God will work effectually in you that believe. There's nothing will ever be as exciting, as wonderful in your life, as to have God's Word working effectually in your inner man. Paul says he, he, that, that he prayed for, the, for us that we'd be strengthened by his spirit in, in your inner man. God desires to, he, he puts his spirit in you, and it's the, the empowering of his spirit in, it's not external behavioralistic religious activity. It's not religious externalism. That's just simply behaviorism. Pavlov's dog stuff. That's really what that is. That's, that, that, that's not, and, and you know that that isn't what you need. You know you don't need an external thing that's all out, outward. You can't change the inside by changing the outside. And Jesus told the Pharisees, he, called, he said, you're whited sepulchers. You, white, you fix up the outside, but inside you're just dead. And that's what religion does. Life in Christ Jesus is the opposite of that. God takes a dead man and gives him life and makes us alive in Christ Jesus. And that's what the grace of God does. God's grace provides that for you. Grace is all that God can do for you. And it's free to do for you through the finished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary. There are two issues. There's the finality of the cross where sin is put away and successfully and eternally dealt with. And then there's the resurrection the reality of life in Christ Jesus. Now, I know what people say. They say, well, Brother Rick, if you preach about the grace of God, people are just going to think, well, that's a license to sin. Now, that's just, that is, is not a, an unreasonable and an unconscionable conclusion to come to. Romans chapter number 5, at the end of the, uh, of the fifth chapter of Romans, Paul says, Moreover, the law entered that, that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. You cannot out -sin the grace of God. The law of God condemns the best of us. It points out that you're a sinner. And it's by the law that we have the knowledge of sin. Sin is a transgression of the law. And the law points out, it's like a mirror, it says, sinner, sinner. The law is like a little man running around behind you, and every time you mess, mess up, he holds up a sign and says, sinner, sinner. <laughs> You'd kind of get tired of that, wouldn't you? People ask me and say, Brother Jordan, you, you believe people should keep the Ten Commandments? Well, sure you should. I mean, what kind of a question is that? The question isn't, should you keep it? The question is, are you? And the answer is, no. No, you're not. Are you? You know, if I ask you to name me the Ten Commandments, could you do it? People tell me all the time, say, well, I believe you should keep the commandments. Well, that's a good idea. Can you tell me what they are? <laughs> well, I, very, very seldom do you meet anybody that can name them all. And even more rare is it to find somebody that can name them in order. Never will you find somebody that can keep all of them. In fact, you really don't keep any of them when you just get right down to it. You say, well, Brother Jordan, I've never killed anybody. But you see, that's, that's, where, that, that, that's where your standard and God's standard is so different. Your standard and my standard is we didn't go out and plug somebody, you know, rub them out. But God says, 1 first Peter, first John chapter 3, that if you hate your brother, you've committed murder in your heart. See, God's standard is the heart attitude that leads to the activity. 
not just the activity. You remember Jesus said, if you commit adultery in your heart, you look upon a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery already. The action only comes from the thinking process. The sin begins in the heart. And you see what the law does is it points out what the heart's doing. You can't see a person's heart. The law points out what the heart led them to do. That's why the Bible says out of the heart are the issues of life. I love that verse. People say, well, I just have issues. <laughs> well, what you have is what your heart's belching out. It's what you have. Well, in Romans 5, when he says, where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Then he says in verse 21, but as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. So we live in the reign of the grace of God. The law of God condemns the best of us, but the grace of God, listen, that, it forgives the worst of us. And somebody says, well, then, what do we, then, then I must just have a, it's easier to get permission, uh, get forgiveness than permission, so I'll just live in the way I want to, and then God will forgive me. Paul anticipated that. He said, that's a wrong conclusion, and here's why. Chapter 6, verse 1, Romans 6, 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Now, when he said God forbid, he, did, he wasn't just saying, oh, God forbid. He was saying, God forbid! <laughs> he, he was stomping his foot, raising his voice, and saying, no! Some... Preachers like to point out that in the Greek language, in that expression, God forbid, that the word God, theos, isn't there. In fact, it's just one word in Greek. And you'll see it translated in some Bibles, may it never be. Oh, it shouldn't be that way. That is not what that expression means in the Greek language. And what you have in a King James Bible that says God forbid, you have sort of what we call a dynamic equivalent. You have a, an idiom in Greek that literally translated one way, but when you get the idiomatic meaning of it, it means, no! And God said so. In other words, God protests against sin. And the way you know that is you look at Calvary. Because at Calvary, you remember Titus chapter 2, it says, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us. What does the grace of God teach you that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly? Grace will never teach you to go live in sin. Oh, you can. You can abuse it. If it's grace, it can be abused. But if it's grace, it shouldn't be abused. You get that? The grace of God teaches us that denying ungodliness and world. Jesus Christ put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. That's what the cross teaches you. And then the resurrection teaches you that you should live. There's life. Sin and death has been dealt with, and now there's life in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Brother Jordan, for that message from the Word of God. Friends, we have an audio CD we would like you to have to go along with today's study. It's yours free of charge. It's our way of saying thank you for listening. We'll be happy to see that you receive your free copy along with a free subscription to our monthly Bible study, The Grace Journal. If you simply write us here at The Message of Grace, the address should be on your screen. That's The Message of Grace, P.O. Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. If you prefer, you may also call us at regular business hours, toll-free, 888-535-2300. The Message of Grace is a ministry of Grace School of the Bible, and we're glad you've been with us today. If our study together has been a help to you, we would be happy to put you in touch with a Bible study in this area where the message of God's wonderful grace is proclaimed from His rightly divided Word. And friend, if you are still not sure of salvation, that your sins are forgiven, and that you have eternal life as a present possession, let us know, and we'll be happy to send you some gospel literature that will show you the way. That address again is The Message of Grace, P.O. Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. Thanks for being with us today, and God's best until we meet next time for another Message of Grace.
he took the blame And then I cry, what wonderful grace What wonderful grace He did it all Oh, praise him